guys, welcome back. It's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Kevin Smith because Kevin Smith knows what makes a good Star Wars movie. And if Kevin Smith says it's good, by God, you better believe him. And if he cries, if he cries on camera, it's double. Then you take good. a shot. You take a shot. I'm sorry. And you'll be drunk. You'll be drunk. That's what he means by the last shot. <laughs> the last shot. Oh my God. Yeah, you take a shot for Kevin Smith crying on camera over a Star Wars movie. So before we get into the video, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. It definitely helps the channel. Thank you so much. Um, we're finding out that two thirds of our viewers aren't subscribed. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of crazy, but yeah, please subscribe to make sure you get all the updates for all the, uh, the new videos as they come out. That's right. So more Kevin Smith, uh, more Kevin Smith videos. So we got a lot to talk about with rise of Skywalker coming out. The, uh, the, uh, uh, news, I guess the promotion for the rise of Skywalker is starting to rise. Everyone's getting really yeah. excited. <laughs> Um, they're getting very excited. They're, they're getting, the rise so, of Skywalker. The rise of Skywalker. It's rising. Uh, you can feel the force rising in your pants. The last shot of... Why do you... Why? Okay. Because they're getting awfully excited. They're getting awfully excited about it. The last shot of Star Wars, the rise of Skywalker will melt fans' minds, says Kevin Smith. So hopefully the, the, the rise and the buildup was... was will melt your mind. Will melt your mind. It's going to melt your mind, according to Kevin Smith. And that is the best picture <laughs> Of Sorry. Kevin Smith ever. This is your brain. Remember this is your brain on drugs commercial. This is your brain. This is your brain on Star Wars. Any questions? Oh. So they're talking about how it's due in December because we didn't know that. Remember, guys, there's a new Star Wars movie come out coming out in December. Please go see it. Go see it because you didn't go see the last one. Uh, Solo. Nobody went to go see Solo. Yeah, because so they didn't want to go after, uh, you know, the one before The Last Jedi. They're the, like, uh, no, Nobody thanks. wants to come after The Last Jedi. <laughs> You're just being um, horrible. Anyway. Nobody wants to come after The Last Jedi. It just, it, it really, the, the rising stopped. Um, okay, so Kevin Smith has promised, he's promised, guys, this is Kevin Smith, that the final shot of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker will melt your mind. But what's really funny is he didn't actually see it. He just said that's what the, that's what the, the staff told him. But he's promising. Everybody tells Kevin Smith everything, apparently, and he cries about everything. Uh, so the J.J. Abrams directed movie will serve as the final installment of the Psy, Psy franchise's sequel trilogy and the Skywalker saga. This is. I don't want it to be the last of the Skywalker saga. I actually want to see the Skywalker saga, not what this is. Yeah. Um, speaking to IGN, trusted media outlet at San Diego Comic-Con, over the weekend, Smith said that while he's not seen the final shot... He promises it'll melt your mind. <laughs> the Rise of Skywalker, he did go to the set of the film in London at Abrams' request, and while there was promised big things by the production crew. Big things that will melt your mind. Big things. Uh, yeah, so there was this scuttlebutt about a set at Pinewood, a big set that the crew were like, you have to see this. When you'll see it, it'll melt your mind. Okay. I asked JJ, they keep telling me I should see the set. And he said, don't, because it's the last shot of the movie. Then I was like, well, now I really want to see it. He replied, you don't want to spoil it. You want to be in the movie theater when you see the final shot. Trust me. I might want to pause that so we're not going to get demonetized for running their videos. Oh, we're not going to get demonetized. Live a little. Smith also praised Abrams as a magical magician who's going to melt your mind. Yeah, you're going to take a magician to try to make a story work after The Last Jedi. <laughs> so it takes a little sleight of hand. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're already kind of starting it. It's like, come back. Come back to Star Wars, guys. Because we, we got, got we got Flash, you know, Palpatine, Flash, you know. Oh, now there's rumor that Vader. Uh, I know. Oh, go ahead. Vader's ghost is going to fight Luke's ghost. Wait, what? Yes. That's an actual rumor. I thought rumor. we were going to talk about the Palpatine thing. Okay, go but ahead. We are, but that's they're, they're using nostalgia. Magician style to cause illusion like Mysterio. Abrams is Mysterio. He's like, we're gonna lure you back into the movie theaters with promises of all these classic characters that we've already killed off. Rumor: Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker to bring back a new hope. And the rumor is that Darth Vader's ghost is gonna fight Luke Skywalker's ghost. This is out today. That's why I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna have. Wait, who is this from? Oh, Cosmic Book News. Cosmic Book News. Suggests that a tie-in New Hope will involve Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, or maybe both. So it could be ghost on ghost action. Can you imagine the the ridiculousness of this? So we got Ray fighting. So now we're gonna have another one of these double lightsaber battles. We're so Ray is supposed to be fighting Kylo Ren through Force Flash, whatever, where she doesn't have to even be near him. They're phoning it in. You can stab him in the back, and you don't have to be right there. They're having Force Phone sex with lightsabers, and, and meanwhile, Vader and Luke are both dead. 
are fighting each other as force ghosts. Okay, well, let's just read what this is about, but this is just my brain hurts. Uh, yeah, so they said that uh, the report doesn't give specifics of what the tie-in with the New Hope could be. It said ties in the dark side. Abrams successfully provided an homage to the film in The Force Awakens. That's debatable. Uh, he leveraged the idea of a Death Star and turned it into It wasn't homage. It was a rip-off directly. It was a rip-off. Beat for beat. So they said one of the criticisms, it was almost like A New Hope. Uh, it wasn't. It was It was too much like A New Hope. Yeah. That's the first thing I said. I was like, what the hell was that? I already saw this movie. That was my first comment. The best guess as to what the scene could involve would be the, uh, the Obi-Wan and Vader fight scene in the Death Star from A New Hope. In fact, a recent rumor suggested that Luke Skywalker would get in a duel with a Sith ghost as possible Luke could end up dueling the Sith spirit of Darth Vader. But Darth Vader isn't bad anymore. He went back to being Anakin. No, we have to make him bad again because people want Darth Vader. But that's stupid. That kind of, that, it's that's the sequel stupid. trilogy. No, no. Then we they have... said Sith ghost. They did not say Vader. It'll, it'll probably be Vader. So this is like speculation and a half. Well, because they have... Okay, so there was a rumor. Uh, Force Awakens, they were going to have Anakin's Force Ghost, and he was going to sort of waffle between being Anakin and Vader, and they never did anything with it. Now they're talking Hayden Christensen. Come so they're going to throw everything at this. We're even going to just completely undo. Let's just completely undo, undo everything. Undo everything. Literally everything. Han and Leia are divorced. Luke's a failure, and now he's dead. Uh, and now, he didn't save his father. He's now Vader again. The Empire never stopped. But good news, uh, Rey, who was apparently from nobody, um, is going to come in and fix it all because she's a woman. She's a woman. It takes a woman's touch uh, to get this right because those Skywalker boys made a mess of the galaxy. Other than the fact that she's a woman, I can't. Un I mean, I don't see what the push is on this. Other than the fact <laughs> she's a woman. That's her character bio. Like you've got all these like really in-depth bios for all the Star Wars characters, and you have Rey. She's a woman. I'm like. Because, I mean, really, <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you get down to it, when you get down to it, get, and I, as a woman who likes strong female characters, when you get down to it, what is Ray's point? She is the one carrying it on. Why? What makes her special? Um, did she have a, a parentage that's special? No. Did she? Was she trained? No. But she suddenly knows how to do everything. Um, but she's a woman. She's got boobs. So that makes her... Has boobs, has lightsaber. Because I mean, you know, because you know, Princess Leia, who did it all before, doesn't count. You know, we need, yeah. we need right. And ironically, we were at a, a store, we were at Big Lots the other day, and they had a bunch of, uh, they had some Star Wars figures there, and that they get their from their clearance or whatever, and almost all of them were Ray. I think yeah, every one but on one was Ray. Yeah, they were all Ray. All Ray but one. There was one Darth Maul, and the rest were all Ray. Darth Maul was still there, I'm surprised. Yeah, there was one Darth Maul, and the rest were all Rey. Well, go ahead, anyway. So ahead. now all of the, the promotion is, is starting for the Rise of Skywalker, because you have to get a rise uh, to get excited for more Star Wars, even though most people don't seem to be very excited uh, for more Star Wars, but it's still probably going to make a lot of money. Um, they got the Visual Dictionary out. They are bringing the Knights of Ren back, who were completely, completely absent from The Last Jedi, never even mentioned. Yeah. Where the hell were they? They bring it up and tease it. So everybody's excited. Knights of Ren. And then they weren't there. They weren't there. But good news. Uh, you got a, uh, a a space gambling establishment. Yes. With space horses. Space horses. Yeah. Um, You got that. We so, got Rose Tico. And you got you got Holdo because, you and know. Holdo, well, she blew the herself up, so she's yeah. not going to be in this So one. I'm just like, you know, why would you want the Knights of Ren when you had all that? This I'm is like, saying. This is like, I mean, this is the big tease right here. Now, this book is not out yet, the Visual Dictionary. They do these for all the Star Wars movies. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to release it until closer to the movie coming out because it will spoil stuff. But look at, look, everybody, we got a new TIE fighter. Go buy toys of that. Look, everybody, Knights of Ren. You want to cosplay as a Knight of Ren, don't you? Yeah, go buy one of that. Look, Red Stormtroopers, new action figures. Go buy you some. sound like the, 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 the lady from Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You, you want your teddy bear. Your teddy bear right there, you know. But that's what it is. It's like, look. Go ahead and oh, make yourself up. Look, 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 fans. Look at all these things you're going to fall in love with because they remind you of things that you had before. And we were bringing the Knights of Ren back because we heard you. We heard you. We heard that, you know, there was no plot to the our, last Our Jedi. piggy bank heard you. And they our heard that, that heard you, you. you didn't like, you know, Solo because you didn't like Last Jedi. So, I mean, but we're, we're not going to say that publicly. We're going to say that we just don't understand what happened. So, uh, yeah, they're really, they're really kind of pushing the, um, it's like, brand like, fatigue, but let's slam it on everything. Yeah, <laughs> so. and, 
you know, I I don't know when the new toys are coming out, but like there are no Star Wars toys anywhere now. It's well, right are, now they're not. They're, they're not clearance. going to. But like Solo, even the Solo stuff, they can't give it right. away. Right. Well, they do have the uh, the cartoon, the one that's on YouTube. Uh, what is that called? Oh, the Galactic Adventures. Or yeah, they is. have yeah. some of those. But yeah, and they keep having. Oh, they're gonna. No, they did bring out. They're bringing back the uh, the, vintage. the vintage ones. Those I might actually be interested in, but that's again, that's like. Classic. Every, you know, D Disney's going back to the, like what? What does everybody love? They love the original trilogy. The theme parks are going back to it with the merch. They're going. You know, unfortunately, they. I think if if you know hindsight's twenty twenty. I think if they could redesign Galaxy's Edge, they would design yeah. the original trilogy. But like, I think they're going to go back to that. Especially with this movie, they're going to you know have all these callbacks because oh, we're wrapping up the Skywalker saga, so it's going to be like Star Wars greatest hits. We're going to make sure we get everybody Palpatine and Vader and everybody in this. Everybody's going to be in it. Yeah, it's just gonna be. Yeah, it is. It is like the greatest hits. That's what it reminds me of. Especially when they when they have it. They're talking. Is this what they talk about uh, George Lucas? No, Kerry Russell wants to assure the fans Felicity. Okay. Believe Kevin Smith and believe Felicity. Uh, this is gonna be nothing like the Last Jedi. Well, if they were smart, it would be nothing like the Last Jedi. So, you know, but they they will publicly not say that Last Jedi sucked. But then they're they're saying Last Jedi sucked. Well, this movie is making people cry because Kevin Smith cries about everything. Russell told the Associated Press, moving forward, she found Abrams' original concept for the final installment in the Skywalker saga. When I read his script, I cried. Better not be the whole rumor that they're gonna just name all Force users Skywalkers. And God. there's no Sith or Jedi, and they're all everybody's just Skywalker. I, I hope that's not when true. When everybody's Skywalker, nobody exactly. Gets. It better not be that. This echoes what many other cast members have been saying, but it was what she said next that really hammers home the fact that Abrams may be course correcting, as some fans oh, hope. Oh, now you're gonna say course correcting is a good. Now thing. we're gonna say it. Obviously, many don't believe the Last Jedi needs any correction, <laughs> but a huge part of the fan felt was somewhat dismissive. Was somewhat elements. dismissive. Somewhat just a tad, tad dismissive. She, she said he's not trying to change it to be something else. He really respects what it is. What? The Last Jedi? No. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker. So J.J. Abrams is going to make an actual Star Wars movie, I guess. Well, then they and had... that made her cry. Then they had... Well, wait. Does she not like The Last Jedi either? <laughs> so I don't think anybody likes The Last Jedi. I do like that shot, though. I love that shot. That photo, photo is great. I'm sorry. Yeah, but it looks like... It looks more like... Um, like Stargate or I know, but I just like I'm not saying I just like that shot. Yeah. This is a from a photography aspect. I like that shot. Anyway, um, um, but I wish I could wear a bodysuit like that too. But um, wasn't there an article I sent you? Do you have it where they were talking about uh, they actually brought George Lucas in supposedly, and they're and they're making sure they push that a lot now because you know, just so you know. Okay, yeah, because this article when they were talking about the the book too. Um, cause they're going to tie it into everything. Cause you know, it's already troublesome when you have so much stuff that you have to buy extra books and extra comics and extra things to understand what the hell's going on. Yeah. I mean, first of all, but they keep bringing up about George Lucas and here's where I saw it that they said about, they're invoking the name of George Lucas now trying to get people, they've been actually, yeah. um, but they did it again, this recent article. There've been a lot of ideas since the beginning, since George first came up with this. Um, of where things could go. Director J.J. Abrams explained in a recent interview, we had a meeting with him before we even wrote the script about this. So a lot of what we have taken is really taken a, taken to heart. Everything that's come before. While it's been obviously significantly challenging, it's been a greater opportunity than a challenge. <laughs> it's challenging. That's, that's a hard way of saying they have to like completely unscrew the last Jedi. You can't unscrew something to after you screwed it. It just doesn't work. Now, when we last left George with Disney, he was calling them white slavers. Mm -hmm. Like literally on Charlie Rose, he called them white slavers. He was not happy with Disney Star Wars. No. Uh, but he was there for the opening of, of Galaxy's Edge. So maybe they worked things out. Maybe uh, Mickey slipped him a... I was saying maybe he worked something out with cash in the palm. With cash in the palm. Um, uh, I, I don't know, but... Uh, maybe he just wants to try to save it because, because it's his thing. He doesn't want to see it go down. Help us, George Lucas. You're our only hope. But anymore, I mean, they've been saying this over and over for the last few months. You know, we talked to George. We, it's fine. We talked to George. It's okay. We talked to George. Come back, everybody. George is involved. Vader's coming back. Palpatine's coming back. Everybody's coming back. We'll bring Han back from the dead if you come back to our movie. That's right. So they're going to melt your mind, though, with the final scene. They're going to melt your mind. I guarantee you the next trailer that comes out is going to be all nostalgia. They're going to have, they're going to show every freaking nostalgic anything you can possibly imagine just to get you to come back to this movie. Yeah, but, but you know, it's because only a small vocal minority didn't like the last one. Just a small group, really. Now, I want to bring this up too. Um, 
because this is interesting. Colin Trevorrow, who was supposed to do episode nine, uh, you know, Luke was supposed to live through episode eight. Which is what would have made sense and probably made people happy. Right. Because it's considered the Skywalker saga. Right, right. So his version was very different. And Daisy Ridley says it was very different. So this will be interesting to come back to after the movie drops, mm -hmm. depending on how the reaction is, and be like, what could have happened if they had moved forward with uh, Colin Trevorrow? Now, he's, of course, the director of the Jurassic World movies. Um, first one was pretty good. Second one I thought was balls. But, you know, what do you got to do? I don't know. Might have been a totally different thing. But, um, yeah, they said uh, they had dinner with him and... and uh, you know, he told told her that uh, they weren't going to do it anymore, but he said it was it was different. It was different. That's all they're saying. Uh, it's just a different thing. She reflected. Everyone's going to have an opinion now, anyway, on the internet. But I think it's fair. Um, so, other than Luke Wait, being alive, all, all I know is they keep putting Daisy Ridley. Like she's constantly talking. They basically took one interview from Daisy Ridley and they like stretched it out. To, like, is that what's 50, going on? Fifty articles. Yeah, this is the same. This is the same freaking article, and this just came out. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, so. no, those weird articles before that, too. So I don't know if she's said a couple PR, you know, or like some kind yeah. of junket. But it's like they're making all this stuff. Daisy Ridley says. Daisy Ridley says. She also says, don't be so vicious. Don't oh, be no, so mean. I love this. This one, I was like, oh, for gosh sakes. Okay. Don't be so mean. Don't be so mean. Fans, you know, don't be so mean because it's somebody's job. Somebody's um, job. Uh, they worked really hard. And that's true. I mean, it is true when you work really hard on something and people take a, a huge steaming shit on it on the internet. But when you're dealing with something like Star Wars, you know, it's going to happen. Even if you create a great movie, it's going to happen. And Ryan Johnson didn't create a great movie. Right. So, so she's basically saying that, you know, understand that people worked really hard on it when you're being so mean. Well, no, people understand that. No one's saying that people didn't work hard on it. But working hard on it does not make it good. Yeah. And, and beyond that... You know, people are allowed to have their opinions, and you know when the director is out there attacking people mm -hmm. who don't like his movie, calling them man babies. Well, before Kelly Marie Tran went off the internet, yeah, even yeah. though he kept saying it was only because of that. No, it wasn't. They have they have proof. So you're just you're just you know throwing kerosene on the fire. But this don't be so vicious. He's talking about you know how people work and people's jobs. Well, because people, hey, if you work at a restaurant, it's your job, and I'm sure you work really hard. But if you, if a bunch of people get food poisoning or if something you made is garbage, people aren't supposed to say it's great and thank you because you worked really hard on it. The God complex of social media. Well, I think there's a God complex with some of these people also. Um, you know, because if you got how many, how ma however many followers and you write something that you think is like so deep and a hundred people like it, it's constant reinforcement. Says the person who's constantly having articles about her opinions. Yeah, but it's not just, it's not, they're, ma they're making this out like it's just a small handful of, of vocal people but a, a lot of people uh, was, they wouldn't have the following if people didn't agree well not them. just that there wouldn't be the need to be so pressing need to promote the hell out of this and make sure everybody knows they went back to the original and talked to george if it was just a small vocal minority that had no impact at all um and then small vocal minority that didn't go see solo so this is right after she suggested yeah she did say that the harsh fan backlash is fair because people are allowed to have their opinions um she said that's fair but she goes, if people hold something incredibly dear and think they know how it should end, it's not like that. It's fair people think they were done wrong. She says that. However, then she goes on. I don't know if they talked about it here. Um, not in this article, but another article she was talking about the viciousness. And she was talking about how she went to a party at a friend's house. And one of their friends said they didn't like The Last Jedi. And she was mad about it because that was so mean. Because people worked really hard and that was somebody's job. I'm like... I don't care if it's your job. You, you, I understand you work hard. People work hard every day on a lot of things. And sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great. So you shouldn't lie to people and tell them something's fantastic even when it sucks because that's their job and they might feel bad. Right. I mean, I mean don't be a dick about it, clearly. You, but, you know. It might make people feel bad. You tell, have you ever watched any of Gordon Ramsay's shows? I mean, come on. He makes people feel bad all the time, but he does it with a purpose. Like, here's how you do better. How you do better. How you do better. And I mean, this, if this is the case, then you can never criticize anything ever. And how is anything ever going to improve if you're not allowed to criticize anything because it's always it's someone's job? Everything is someone's job. If you don't like that restaurant, it was someone's job. If you don't like that clothing line, that was somebody's job. If you don't like the new record by album by so-and-so, that was a bunch of people's jobs. If you don't like, you know, whatever, it's someone's job. People, oh my God, we get comments all the time. People don't like what we have to say, but it's our job. And you know what? We're just like, hey, you're allowed to like it. You're allowed not to like it. Whatever. 
It's just, you know, the vicious people will go, yes, people can be over the top. I agree. But the idea that you can never criticize things because it's someone's job is ridiculous. At a party, someone said they didn't like The Last Jedi and that made her upset. Shh, don't say that. Daisy Ridley's here. She's over at the punch bowl. And she'll get she's mad. Not, she's she's gonna she's a little touchy about it. Um, um because they didn't like the whole movie. It might not have anything to do with her. And it's like other aspects of the movie they didn't like. Well, that's you know, that's that you you insult me because you know people tell us they don't like ours of all time. My gosh. It's you like, have to get over it and move on. Why is it all about Daisy? Oh, okay. I was going to say, why is it all about Daisy Ridley, not uh, Olden Ehrenreich? Like, you don't hear anything about Olden Ehrenreich, whose solo movie bombed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a bomb. Nobody's talking about him because there's not going to be a sequel, but we got episode nine around the corner. So we have to remind everybody that Daisy Ridley Who's, exists. She also said she wouldn't want to do any more of these Star Wars movies anyway. Like, I mean, like Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and, and like, you know, Anthony Daniels and Kenny mm -hmm. Baker and all them. Um, Peter Mayhew and so on, they loved it and they continued to promote it and be part of it and be excited to be involved with it even when there wasn't any more movies. For years after the fact, she's already like, yeah, I wouldn't be doing any more anyway. You know, it's, she clearly doesn't like care about the way they, these guys did anyway. But beyond that, you know, which doesn't have to, that's fine. But I'm just saying, you know, don't be so vicious. I mean, how much crap did Mark Hamill take when he put a picture up with the, the old cast in the Falcon? Is, yeah, you know? I know. And I mean, that was vicious. That was people's jobs. But you know, people, you know, he, he worked on Star Wars. He was part of that job. That was part of his job too. You know, that's, that's okay. You know, it, just don't be vicious. Just, yeah, it's, it's, but it's starting already. I mean, I kept thinking maybe they're going to turn over a new leaf. Maybe these media outlets will, um, you know, start to be like, well, you know, let's, let's appeal to the old school fans now. Cause it seems like JJ Abrams wants to do that, but, uh, it's, it's going to start. It's going to oh, start. The media is already going to gonna start. If you yeah. don't like it, you're a, an ist, you're, you know, a racist, sexist, homophobe, misogynist, whatever. They'll start with that now. But Kevin Smith said it's going to melt your mind. It's going to melt your mind, everybody. So uh, be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared to have your mind melted by J.J. Abrams' uh, finale to the Skywalker saga, uh, uh, vetted by George Lucas, starring... All of your favorite Star Wars characters, even all the dead ones. Mm -hmm. Because we got to sell a lot of merch. We got to sell a lot of tickets. <laughs> we got to get, get people in the galaxy's edge. We got to sell. We got to got to promote the streaming service. We, we got a brand. We got a brand and IP to protect. That's right. Screw the storytelling. We got to sell merch. If you're going to protect the IP, you should have stopped before The Last Jedi. <laughs> yeah, right. It. <laughs> all right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.